Hey everybody, it's David again. Today's video is very special. It's my first feedback video. It's a feedback for one of you. The only person that sent me his question and his design so that I can go over it and give this feedback. So first of all, thank you very much. So some time ago, I posted this link in one of my videos. You can send me your designs. Occasionally, I will pick some of them. I will try to give you a general and also a practical feedback of how you can reach the design language that you like, or maybe even answer some of the questions like how exactly can I do this and that? Okay, it doesn't matter. If you're basing your designs off of something, then just please add this reference in the email as well. Okay, so this way I can just, you know, basically copy paste from what you're aiming to and I can tell you how you can reach the same style for example so let's begin so let's go over the question real quick hi David love your videos man I'm sending you the tab menu of my PC game project I really appreciate if you give any feedback on character and weapon slots I tried to make them like mail stamps on paper but I didn't like the way it is also you can give me feedback on overall design and color I'm going to attach my reference picture for art style Thank you for paying attention and actually attaching a reference. All right, so this is the reference image and this is the design that we are gonna feedback. So let's address it as if it was a request from a client or a request from a product manager. Like anything, we start with research, okay? And let's do a real quick Pinterest visual research for how stamps may look like in a game environment okay so i've gathered some reference from from pinterest and i hope this video won't be banned due to copyright use because i just <laughs> used plenty all right so before we go into the stylization of this game ui okay we, we can see that it uses hard shadows from the elements and we have this stroke and we have these plain colors okay before we do that let's understand how these postmarks look like in reality we have tons of postmark styles and references okay and before we start designing anything we can just play with existing elements put them on our design and see how they look if maybe we need to address something uh, to make it look better for example this postmark here it has this little cutout edges right but they're too little if you export them right now to your phone or maybe if it's not a phone it's a, it's a screen okay but still it's like gonna look like a noise okay so we don't want that we probably would like to go in this direction and have these edges more spaced and bigger and as you can see here they look a little bit better so my personal take on it is I would go for something like these two postmarks here because they have just wider space and it's going to look better even on smaller screens. OK, this one, it looks too realistic. Therefore, it's going to be too noisy. And together with the effects that we are going to apply on it, it just won't look that good. OK, and even though I don't know who made these postmarks, if you see them on my video, just to help you won't mind I use them as a reference i won't be using them in the design just as a reference as a guidance so uh, so it's kudos to you and thank you for being my guide for this tutorial and if this is your designs so just let me know and i will give you credit in the description of this video so please just don't report it to youtube it won't be nice another reference here is this portraits of vincent van gogh great artist and this is something that we can uh, take as reference of how we can use the image of a face here in our design so also as you can see here we have this white frame before we have the image and I think it's also great stuff because you have some paper texture here that will separate also this noisiness from the subtlety of the image okay so let's take this postmark here that we are gonna use as our reference and make this whole thing white let's put a rectangle here with some little round corners like that okay it's white we don't see it but here it is uh, black already now let's put some image in here and let's use this image that you had on your initial design 
So let's take this little cute character, copy it, put it here and apply with a clipping mask. Right, so first of all, it already looks a tiny bit better because we just used some of real world references. Maybe we can make it just a little wider here. All right, like this. Now, if you are aiming for a paper look, then there is this texture here, this grainy texture. We also can do it on our image. So basically you create a new layer, fill it with whatever color you want, like black, for example. And then you go to this file, noise, add noise, and you just play with the amount. Okay, if you want this noise to be monochromatic, then just select this uh, checkbox here. Now play with the parameters to your liking. You can hit OK to, uh, to confirm. Control C on the keyboard and we can scale it up a little bit so that it gets also this blurriness to this graininess, right? And now it looks a tiny bit more like a texture and not like noise. And now if we make it a clipping mask and we go to screen and now we can play with the parameters of the opacity. And as you can see, we achieved pretty much the same kind of texture like we have here on the Vincent van Gogh postmark. Okay, of course you can add or reduce whatever that you like. For example, we can do like this and maybe make it a little bit smaller. So we have this little grayness. Okay, so look, we already have a very nice solid base for our character. Okay, Vincent van Gogh, thank you. Now, as you can see here, we cannot use this image as is, right? We need to create this frame. And the way we can create this frame is super simple. We just need a rectangle of white color. I don't like to use exactly 100% white, just a tiny bit with some color. Look, if I put the color palette here, you see that it's almost white, but it's not. Okay, and this gives you this little playfulness to the color as well. Uh, we can drop the opacity a little bit so that we see the cutouts and now we can take the ellipse tool and create a bunch of circles just like that. We can aim to cover exactly the gaps that we have. If it's something that won't be repeating itself, like for example, a texture for a pop-up or something, then we need to have uh, a better solution and I uh, maybe will show it in a different video. But for this video, we just can simply copy this bunch of times with Alt and Shift. Okay, now select all of these circles and click Ctrl E on the keyboard. It will merge them and do the same here as well. Copy this down here. Copy this to the left to merge everything together. Now we have all of these uh, circles as one shape. And now we need to create the cutouts. So take our rectangle shape for the base, yeah? Let's do it like this for the base of this mark and the circles. We select both of them with control and now again, control E to merge them. Now they are one shape and we need to take all of these circles, select them with this path selection tool. Go to this box here above everything and do subtract front shape. Boom. And now you have your postmark frame that's ready to be used and that's ready to get some effects on it. And let's go back to the reference image that we have. So as you can see here, everything kind of has some character to it, okay? This little flag here, like waves like that, and it has these little cutout holes and it also some texture to the button itself. The same we have for this little button as well. As you can see, it's not completely straight. It has these little lines here and there. It gives this image a little character. Okay, and this is also what I want us to have on our design. There are a few ways we can add these characteristics to this image. First of all, we can just uh, create a smart object. Now we can manipulate it to give it more characteristics. So the first thing would be just to give it some rotation. So even a small rotation like this, see how it suddenly made this design a tiny bit better. It's less than 2% rotation and it already gives this some kind of interesting characteristics. The other thing that we can do is just have some warp on it. So if we enable the transform box with Ctrl T and click with the right mouse on uh, and get this warp action going, we can go here to this upper panel and play with these parameters. Let's do this flag warp effect, something smaller like this. I think it works, you know, it's such a small detail and you may even think that it's uh, redundant, but it makes the design a little bit nicer. See, 
it gives it a little playfulness and character and I really like it. Okay, now once we are done with our character postmark, the same goes by the way with this skill and weapon slots. Copy it and we shrink it and we change the rotation a little bit so that it looks like as if a real person actually put them there. So you have this playfulness with the shapes, playfulness with the alignment, so it shouldn't be completely straight like that. We can have it like working this way. And if it's a scroll or something and you, for example, you need to give uh, the R&D team some kind of guidance on how exactly you want this to be uh, positioned. Just make two positions like this. They are slightly different uh, from one another, but they are different enough to be perceived in something new. So you can have this and if you continue copying it, you see it has character and it looks real nice. What can be used as a reference for the style? So for example, I will just copy this area here. I'm not sure how visible all the little details and strokes are, therefore I'm gonna play with the levels a little bit so that I can see exactly what effects they used on this design. Now it's much more visible, like I can see the drop shadow, I can see the stroke, the inner glow, some textures and edges. So let's start with the simplest of them. Let's start with the drop shadow and by the looks of the design it looks like we have a strong shadow that's about like for me it's 20 i'm working by the way on a 4k resolution big screen therefore won't be any problem transferring it to any software uh, after that okay and here if we play with the direction of it it's not exactly underneath the image in our reference it has this little side view now we can have capacity to it like 30 percent works really nice maybe it can be a little bit closer i'm not sure now i think 12 actually looks very good let's do the stroke and in the reference it's almost black but we have a brown texture and bl brown color palette so i will be using this what is this brown draw color here? I think it's it needs to be a little bigger, so something like that. And also we have the inner glow, but we're going to be using inner shadow. And actually because we have a, a white texture, then our shadow, like inner glow, can actually be inner shadow. So we can do something like that. And we don't need much, we can do something more extreme and have this choke like to 80% or something to have this effect of, uh, of a depth to this... Uh, stamp basically so maybe this uh stroke color is a bit harder we can make it a little bit more brighter like this and also this drop shadow i think it also needs to have some kind of size i mean it will feather the edges a little bit more okay and also here's a quick and very nice tip on how you can test your designs on a stylistic level a great way to know if what you're doing suits a particular style that you are aiming for is to have your reference side by side with your design but better is that you put your design on the reference so doing something like this will help you a lot understand if what you're doing actually can be part of this world okay and if we're going for something like this for example i think it already looks pretty close to the design that we are going for when i see it side by side like that i understand that maybe this the grainy texture maybe we can reduce it by some percentage something like this this completely white texture of this postmark kind of stands out too much it lacks this little tweaks of scratches and i think we can also add them as well so let's go here create another layer and we need to have really tiny scratches like that and let's save let's see how it looks like if it looks close to what we are aiming for great i think it can be like not two but maybe three now we can do a scratch like that scratch like this save test you see it looks just as if it was part of this design okay now let's copy them let's rotate them yes i think it looks really nice right now now this inner shadow as you can see it's like too it's too small so let's make it a little bit bigger so inner shadow with size of five i guess we can play with the opacity a little bit so it doesn't stand out that much. And also the shadows, uh, they don't exactly align because we have brown color palette in our design. But here it's black, so just for the purpose of this placement, I will make them also this. Yeah, they're blue here, but let's, let's do them exactly like here. 
Now, if we want to do this, uh, you know, like the same cutout elements, then we can just go on this smart object because this is what we need. And we can enable this mask here with a simple lasso tool from here, yeah, polygonal lasso tool. We can just go over some of the edges and make a cutout on them. So basically, like we spoke about in our silhouette videos, you don't want straight lines so maybe even we can go something extreme like this and remove some of the straight lines of our design if it doesn't work so you know you always can bring it back with the white uh, color because it's a mask we are not ruining anything it's amazing now again maybe we should go something like this yeah something like that works very nice it's good. You don't want to copy exactly some of the designs that you are referencing from. You want to have the general idea copied, but not the exact design. Anyone who is interested in this kind of content and feedback, again, here's the link. Send me your stuff. The more you send, the more I will feedback, the more you will learn from it. Now let's go back to our design and evaluate the changes. We have our stroke. We have this... Uh, textures that were applied as well here because it's a smart object uh, we have the stroke yeah we have the stroke a little bit bigger of course it's blue so let's uh, change it back to this brown color yeah like that exactly uh, and also we have some storytelling go going here uh, with this uh, little cutouts and as you can see it looks a little bit better without the straight lines maybe you know maybe all these little cutouts they are too much and they create a little bit more noise that than we need to but it's uh, really fixable easily because we have smart object when you are happy with the design that you have you can copy the same principles to all the other designs that you have on the on the screen so okay we have our amazing postmarks characters and weapon slots ready to be used in our game and if we go back yeah we can see a huge difference between what it was and what it Came. So my dear friend, thank you first of all for submitting and second I hope you learned from my process how I approach the visual research and how I apply the observational skills to the actual design that you are going for. Okay, don't forget all these little nuances. 90% of it is observation, 10% is execution. If you are familiar with the software then it's great. If you're not you can always search the particular topic that you are interested in anywhere on YouTube or maybe even on my channel as well. Everyone else that are watching, if you learned something new for yourself, give this video a big thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel. As always, thanks for watching and I see you all in the next one. Bye bye. Oh, and by the way, I asked YouTube to suggest this video here for you, so just keep watching. <laughs> bye bye.